Hey there everyone, today I'm bringing you another Lies of P build guide and if you're looking for a heavy hitting motivity build that is very well capable of one hitting most mini bosses and even two to three hitting bosses, I've got you covered as this build is absolutely nuts. For more Lies of P guides, subscribe and check out the rest of the channel, but in this video I'll go through some gameplay footage to showcase the power of the build with a late game boss example, then we'll go through everything that's needed from attributes, weapons, pure organ upgrades, and other prep needed so you can use this for yourself. So the idea behind this build is smart consumable usage and a relatively technical build up to one insanely powerful weapon attack to dish out as much damage as you can, then retreat and repeat the process until your enemy is dead. It can pretty much one shot all mini bosses which roughly have around 50% the health of a large story boss, so yes they're pretty darn powerful, and you can also 2 to 3 shot bosses with this if you're well prepared and executed properly. But keep in mind this build is pretty high maintenance, but even if you don't always use the whole strat, it will still be a heavy hitting motivity build. Also shout out to TMO who gave the idea to use the big wrench art for better damage than what I used before. So first the example is the notorious deer mutant that you'll first encounter in chapter 4 I believe. It has around 7000 to 8000 health so again quite powerful and that's around 50% of the health of an actual boss so don't underestimate them, and with buffing up our weapon, being on maximum durability and using an elemental grinder, a single fable attack chips it down to 5% health and stagger it for the kill. Another example are these very annoying chimera creatures in late game that has slightly less health than the deer monster, but are still a huge pain in the ass, and thankfully with a fully executed sequence, this build can also one-shot them quickly to get them out of the way. Finally, the next example is going to be a very minor late game boss spoiler, but I'm really not showing anything major so I think it's safe to watch, skip it if you're worried, but I'll showcase the true power of this build. Upon entering the arena we do our usual prep, light up our weapon and activate the police baton motivity buff ready to strike, and upon dodging the boss we execute a full triple charge fable art of the wrench for over 4000 damage 50% of its health that could be more if bosses didn't have so much defense than normal monsters, and if they were more vulnerable to electricity like some others are, you would accomplish much much more damage since electric blitz increases damage taken. After some careful dodging we also prepare for our next strike and opening so we have to use our fable catalysts, repair our weapon back to the maximum, and the moment we have a new opening we can strike again, though I messed up here as it was only a double charge instead of a successful 3. So as you can see this build is capable of absolutely monstrous damage relatively fast, but it does require preparation and maintenance if you wish to have the same damage. If not, it's still very powerful, but will have slightly lower damage. So first, let's go through the attributes of the build. It is certainly a glass cannon character with minimal defenses since we want as much damage as possible, so we only take 20 vitality and 15 vigor for the minimal comfortable health and stamina in my opinion, along with 18 capacity so that we aren't super heavy, only slightly, which is still enough to reliably dodge enemy attacks. Next it's time to dump our points into motivity, but keep in mind the way the game works I don't recommend going full motivity since after thoroughly testing it the game seems to be balanced around having two main stats instead of just one due to the soft gaps on attributes, which come in effect around 30 points in them. So instead we put 36 and 36 points into both motivity and technique, with maxing motivity first as your leveling since that is our main attribute of course. This is the most damage I've been able to squeeze out and thanks to us using two attributes for damage, we can also use two attribute rings to boost them, which will result in a slightly higher attack power overall than going full motivity. But the biggest advantage is that your scaling will be much better at least for legion arms, so overall this is a much more efficient spread. In the weapon section I'd like to start that I won't go deeply into legion arms since this build isn't really about using them to the best, but if I had to recommend one I would still go for the puppet string since that's pretty much the most powerful legion arm in the game, more explained in my top 3 legion arms video. The weapons this build uses are all available very early in the game so you can enjoy this build almost from start to finish of Lies of P, it will require the big pipe wrench that you can pick up from a chest in the cave after Vanini's factory, and you'll need the Krat police baton from an officer puppet you'll meet very early in the game and is pretty much unavoidable. The final weapon combination is using the big wrench head on the Krat police baton handle, and the reason is that the wrench head is a slow very hitting weapon, but with a very fast and incredibly powerful tripper charge fable art that scales very well with damage. And the police baton handle has a fable art that increases your next attack's damage by at least 50% and I even had results of 
We will alter the police baton's handle for technique, so it scales with both motivity and technique. For the reasons I explained in the attribute section, this seems to be the highest damage you can squeeze out and is slightly better than pure motivity. The four amulets I use are Extreme Modification Amulet that increases our weapon damage in proportion to the number of Fable slots that I'll show in the Pjorgen section soon. This is one of the best scaling amulets you can equip overall and can be acquired from the second boss of the game, so it's very early as well. Then a damage increase amulet depending on the enemies you're facing for a sizable damage increase again. It's sadly hard to pinpoint the exact number since for whatever weird reason they have decided to randomize numbers in Lies of P, so it's quite a headache to figure it out, but it's around 10% increase. Then the other two amulets are the plus 4 attribute stats for the respective ones, motivity and technique to maximize the damage in our weapon, since that is our main source of our power through the fable attack, but these will come in hand really late in the game, so for general gameplay feel free to swap out the stats for other useful ones when you don't need to maximize your damage, as while these are useful they are the smallest increase, and I haven't really found any other amulet that increases the fable attack damage of our build. Finally, we are the P organ upgrades and in all honesty for most upgrades you can choose whichever quality of life options you'd like. There are basically only 4 upgrade types that are required in order to achieve this build and if you need tips for optional upgrades, I have a great video that I released recently. First and most importantly, we need to take both Fable slot upgrades in Phase 1 and Phase 4 in order to have 5 slots for the amulet and also to be able to use our Fable Arts a lot. And to boost their damage, also take the increased Fable Arts damage in again Phase 1 and Phase 4. In order to be able to have a steady flow of Fable charges, we also take both consumable slot increases and again Phase 1 and Phase 4, so we can have 5 Fable Catalysts equipped, and we also need to take the Enhanced Fable Catalyst effect in Phase 2 and Phase 5 to increase their charges by around 50%. Then the most important upgrade for this build to make it work is in Phase 2, to enhance weapon attack when weapon durability is at the maximum, which is between 20 and 25% damage increase and is one of the biggest boosts to our Fable art. Everything else you can freely choose for yourself if you want more defense or boost it even further with damage on low health or when pool cells are discharged, but all of that is optional and is up to you how much you're willing to risk. So how does this build actually work and why do we need all of this? So like I said, the build is about using the maximum charge of the big wrench fable art to deal damage and we use multiple sources of buffs in order to achieve our one-shots. First, we need 5 fable slots for the modification amulet and the combo itself. Have our weapon at maximum durability, you can just repair your weapon to the max before using your combo so it's really not that big of a deal. Activate an electric blitz abrasive on your weapon to apply electric blitz that increases overall damage dealt. Activate the police baton fable for a 50% damage increase. Then finally execute the triple charge wrench combo for big big damage. It seems like a lot of maintenance but once you get the hang of it, it is a fairly simple and fast process but it might require some grinding in the game to be able to always have the items you need, for which there are fixed shops in the hotel and in the black market in the Malum district. Remember that if you need to charge up your fable before boss fights, don't waste your catalysts as you can just teleport back to the hotel and walk into the training area for a free full charge, so use that if you aren't lazy. So that's a wrap for this one-shot motivity build everyone. This was pretty fun to test out and build. It's an incredibly powerful motivity build from pretty early game all the way into NG plus even. And don't worry, it has the one-shot combo but it's still very capable and possibly top tier build in general to play the game, so feel free to go for it in case you are interested. Next I want to create a tank build, so look forward to that as I will be posting it soon on the channel. So like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you're interested in more. Thank you for watching everyone and the support of my Lies of P content, it's been very much appreciated, have a wonderful day and I'll see you the next time.